do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourself were being tortured. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, let the words of my mouth bring you prayers. Let the words that I speak be seasoned with your love and your grace. May the things, dear Lord, that I choose to say bring glory. Not shame to your name this day, dear and precious God. Please let the words of my mouth bring you praise in Jesus' name. Subject this morning, Central's Vision Part 2, Radically Inclusive. Central's Vision Part 2, Radically Inclusive. Before I arrived, before I knew, I would arrive. Central United There was a vision statement received and accepted by the disciples who called themselves members of the Central. That vision statement declares Central vision is to be a Christ centered, radically inclusive, intergenerational congregation. It uses his spiritual gifts to meet the needs of our unique surrounding community. I did not have anything to do with that. It was here when I got I just believed. Exclusion seems the name of the game. Allow 
Paulian figure. To digress for a moment, tell a brief story I wrote across recently. Before I get there, I want you to go with me now. This is a story on the playground. Do you recall the playground? Remember the playground when you were nine, ten? Boys played with boys, except when there were some girls who wanted a piece of that toughness. <laughs> girls played with girls, except when there was a boy that wanted that tenderness. Oh, the playground could be a fun thing. Playground sometimes is not so fun. James Hamilton Thompson was nine years old. His brother David was seven. They were on the playground. Mm -hmm. They were playing with the boys and the girls were playing with the girls. And then one girl decided to come across the playground. They'd been invited to kiss James and his brother David. David's nine. I'm David Seven, James is nine, and she goes over, kisses James on the cheek, kisses David on the cheek. They were stumped, confused, perplexed. <laughs> but they went on playing. Boys played with the boys and the girls, played with the girls. They were home. Several children, boys and girls, when they were playing, two boys and a girl, just Plain, just a kiss. This was Monroe, North Carolina. This was 1958. This was segregation. The girl went home and told her parents about the kiss. What did she say? We don't know. We can only speculate. Her mom and daddy were outraged. They went to find the not only did they go find the boys, they went and found police to help them find the boys. And the police found these boys, nine and seven. They found these boys, nine and seven. They arrested these boys, nine and seven. They handcuffed these boys, nine and seven. They handcuffed and beat these boys, nine and seven. They handcuffed and beat these boys and accused them of rape. These two boys, kissed by a girl, were taken into detention. They were sent to a counselor daily. A counselor who said to them, and I quote, you should be castrated. They were detained for three months. Only a national outcry caused the governor to grant clemency, but not before these boys' lives, before their futures had been Destroyed. Babies. These babies were not included in the family of humanity. These babies were viewed by the society as unworthy of a childhood, much less decency as adults, treated as beasts, as monsters, as dirt. This is radical. Exclude. Not just on the playground, but at the bar, at the club. Matthew Shepard went to the bar. He was 21. College student, 21. He was slight of stature, 21. A college student, slight of stature, 21. A college student, a gentle soul. He was also an openly gay man. In a bar, meeting two fellas, assuming friendship at best, above interest at worst, he accepted a ride home. Matthew Shepard never got home because he was gay, because he was small, because he was slight, because he could not fight back. These two people beat him. They beat him. And pistol whipped him and tortured him and hung him on a fence and left him in almost freezing temperatures to die. His only witnesses 
the moon and the stars. The wind and the animals, the earth and the frigid cold. He was an abomination, abhorrent, worthy only of annihilation. This man, not even into full manhood, 21 murdered. This is radical exclusion on the playground at the bar. And can I say sadly in the church? The church that keeps out the fellow of ill repute, the woman who smells badly and has a bad reputation. The church that keeps the child with the messed up parents out. The church that keeps people out who have the wrong accent. The church that keeps people out to have the wrong haircut. The church that keeps people out to have the wrong citizenship in the church. The church that shuts out same-sex lovers. The church that shuts out former felons. The church that shuts out the woman with five kids by six different daddies. The church that doesn't pay any attention at all to bringing in people who are mentally ill, drug addicted, hungry, homeless, helpless, hopeless. The church yes. can oftentimes be accused of radical exclusion. Yes, I know that five kids can have six different <laughs> Trying to come together. There was Methodist Church, 
the Methodist Episcopal Church South and the Methodist Protestant Church. Let me take up the version for a second here. The reason we've got a Methodist Episcopal Church South is because the Southern Church in the Methodist Episcopal Church said, look here, we are going to keep the Negro shackled. We're going to keep the Negro enslaved. We're going to keep the Negro in word. Yes. Come on. Come on. stop saying that word. We want to be sure the N-word is kept in their places. You got too many people talking about citizenship. You got too many people talking about them voting. You got too many people talking about them being equal to us. Stop for a minute, man. Yes, sir. Are y'all registered to vote? Yes. 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 Are you making sure that are you in for 10? Yes. Vote? Yes. There's plenty with 20? Yes. Are you making that happen? Brothers and sisters, I want you to stay with me. 16 years before the Civil War, come on, Reverend Grace, 16 years before the Civil War, the Methodist Episcopal Church said, we're going to split because we got to be sure to keep it. Don't get it twisted. We got an AME church and an AME Zion church because in the city of brotherly love, the Philadelphia. They saw the black people praying at the altar. St. George Church and pulled them out. Yeah. You're not supposed to be here. Richard Allen said, let me finish. You ain't never see me again. Oh, but I digress. 1939, they said, we can get together, but we're not coming with you if you don't find a way to keep the Negro in this place. So, they created six jurisdictions, five geographical, and one based on white supremacy, racism, they call it the colored jurisdiction, the central jurisdiction. Now, stay with me. In 1968, after the murder of Martin King, in 1968, sisters and brothers, when there was a context in time when black people were rising up and standing up, United Methodism came to be. And when they came to be, they said, this thing here ain't looking good. The culture has already desegregated. We still got ours going. What are we going to do about it? Stay with me because this is awfully important. See, a lot of our people ain't talking about this. That's right. All right. I bet you in Central Church, there's people filled with one hour walls that's going to talk about. Oh, yes, it is. 1968, when they, when they made this, what well, here's what they did. They dismantled the Central Jurisdiction. 1972, they, we got to find somebody that we can write out of the books. So in 1972, they write, homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. They write that in the book. They never had it before, but in 72, we got to do something. You know, we, we, somebody got to be out. <laughs> huh? so, somebody got to be out. I want you to stay with me, though. The injurious language is not simply the language of 72. The injury happens in 1939 because to this very day, we still have five jurisdictions. Why? So certain people can have their way of life. So certain people can be as bigoted as possible and put a cross in a flame to it and say they put it in the name of the Lord. Yeah, 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 don't, do not get this twisted. They created, they disbanded the central jurisdiction, but left all the others. This regional bias, bigotry, white supremacy, racism continues to this day. In the context of the church, Jim Crow never left. He just took off his hood, took off his sheet, put on a briefcase of the name James. James and Jim Crow, same people, Jill and Jane Crow, still with him, oh bless his name. Radical exclusion still happens. Come on, stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. And God gave central decision. Christ said, It's emancipation 
from discrimination. It is freedom from foolish evil. And that's like somebody born of a mother is not a child. Radical inclusion. Call to accept and receive people as important. People as human. Every human being as a child of God. Are y'all still with me? I believe the text helps us here. It helps me and you remember what we claim. Come on, Sister Bernard, right it's enough of us. Here's what we claim, here's where we're going to live. The text helps us here. Three things I'm going to do. First, keep loving the family. The text says, let mutual love continue. Love here is Philadelphia. That's the Greek. Philadelphia. Brotherly love and sisterly affection. Fellowship of believers, the family. We love each other. Demonstrate sibling love to all. Radical inclusion is to keep loving in the family. Yes. That don't mean you like everybody. Some folk in the family get on your nerves. <laughs> Some people in the family aggravate, irritate, annoy. In the family, they say we like them. But we gotta love them. Sometimes play um, agape as cheap law, as if Philadelphia is not good law, as if Eros is not good law. Stay with me. When you love in the family, you love for real. We may fight in the family, but y'all folk outside ain't gonna do nothing. We love him in the family. The church family in Hebrews understood this. They understood this concept. Wesley talked about Christian conference. They got together often. They came to love by being together in the spirit. They had spiritual friendships. Friendship. They learned to love each other as they got to know each other. They were together as family. Church family love comes in being together. When we're together more, we get to know our strengths, not simply our weaknesses. If we're together more, we get to know our good traits and our challenging ones. If we only gather for meeting, only gather under stress, only gather for business, only gather under duress, brothers and sisters, we may meet somebody whose business we don't like. And that's the only time we get with them, we may never see. that God brings in them. We've got to gather more than that. That's why one of these six marks is that was stolen from John Wesley and from Hebrew. That these six marks and spiritual friendships are more than just church stuff. It is, how is it with your soul? Good days and bad days. How are you in fun times and rocky times? How is it when we hang out and have fun and live and learn and love together, even when we fuss. We got to have fellowship times, y'all. Fellowship times, duos, trios, quartets, quintets, choirs, praise teams, step teams, debate teams, prayer circles, book clubs, cliques, gangs. We need to be sure when we get together. Don't act like ain't no gangs in church.
If we get together and come in the show, we get together and remember we fail. And we remember to do no harm, to do good, stay in love with God. God can bless us to share Philadelphia, to share fellowship, to share sibling love. We got to remember to keep the love going in the family. Keep us radically inclusive. Are y'all still with me? Yes. We're, we're, we're going to keep the love in the family. We need, we need to be sure that we are hospitable to the stranger. The passion says, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing that, you have entertained angels. And not alone. Yes. Uh oh, oh, I was over at Rose. James King. After a month, I said, okay, look like this phone call ain't working. So 